Getting a machine learning model can often be the easy part, but managing and deploying models in production environments is often more challenging. We know that using SQL to deploy models from within Oracle Database is powerful, but applications today increasingly rely on REST endpoints for even greater flexibility. But you not only have in-database models, you also have models from TensorFlow, MXNet, PyTorch, and Scikit-Learn, built using third-party engines, so you have a lot of models. How do you manage them? Can you deploy them to applications using a common framework? Using REST endpoints, Oracle Machine Learning Services makes it easy to manage and deploy your in-database models and third-party Onyx format models from a single cloud service for ease of application integration. Use REST endpoints to score data with results returned in JSON format. Use the same REST environment for cognitive text analytics using an OML pre-built model to extract relevant topics, keywords, summaries, sentiment, and similarity from text. With Oracle Machine Learning Services, you get model management and deployment, along with cognitive text capabilities, from the convenience of a REST interface. Learn more at oracle.com slash machine dash learning and try out OML services with Oracle Autonomous Database. Okay, so thank you for joining today's session, uh, OML feature highlight, uh, OML services on autonomous uh, database for model deployment. Uh, Marcos Aaron Sabia is our speaker today, and he's going to take us through uh, the features of uh, OML services, a, a component that is uh, coming soon, and you'll be able to, uh, to take advantage of that for uh, a variety of features that we're going to hear about now. So with that, I will turn it over to Marcos, and we look forward to hearing about this great feature. Thank you, Mark, and hello, everyone. If you guys need, uh, please make sure that uh, you ask us questions through the um, uh, Q&A, right? And then at any point, we're going to have uh, Sherry, Mark, and actually Boriana as well from our team um, uh, helping us uh, and, and helping you guys with any, any questions and any requests, okay? So we're going to talk about uh, basically OML services, right? So that's a, a new REST API that um, works for model uh, deployment and management and um, safe harbor here. It is uh, almost there. So we, we, it, it is today available in limited availability. Um, so again, anyone that wants to test it out, uh, just uh, send me a, a message, an email, or ask us a question. Um, and basically, it's uh, OML services is part of the Oracle machine learning family, right? And, and the, the attributes that we always talk about when we talk about Oracle Machine Learning is the automation capabilities, the scalability, and the fact that it's production ready. So OML services is gonna help us a lot with all of that, right? That component of the deployment and um, the, the models, right? That we're gonna see. So the, the basic idea is that uh, it actually supports uh, model deployment and, and the basic lifecycle management of models, right? Um, but not only of the Oracle Machine Learning uh, in database models, uh, but also uh, of the uh, open neural networks exchange machine learning models, right? And the idea is that you can register both of these types of models with OML services, and then you're gonna get back a REST API interface and a URI that you will be able to use, right? So we, we basically enable right, REST endpoints. So the endpoints where you store the machine learning models, you can basically create then the scoring endpoints. And then we support classification and regression for third-party Onyx models, right, specifically. So if you have, say, your typical scikit-learn or your TensorFlow uh, model, uh, you can actually convert those into Onyx format. And then you can register that with OML services. We also offer some a specifically proprietary uh, cognitive text, right? Um, and those are capabilities in English, French, and Spanish for uh, topic discovery keywords and summary sentiment and feature extraction based on, on a Wikipedia knowledge base, right? Using embeddings. And uh, I'll, again, I'll, I'll show you guys around all of these functionalities. Uh, and in addition to that, we also support cognitive image functionality which means basically uh, image classification that's right now limited to image 
classification. Um, and the idea is that if you have a model that does image classification, you can also convert that into Onyx and we can register that model. And then we are able to return to you uh, the classification, right, of that image, of a new image that you, you, that you try to score. So uh, in essence, these are basically all the, the different components, right, that the different um, endpoints that we have. So we have administration components. We have the generic component, which is just for you to bring in, you know, your typical open API specification out of all mail services, your Swagger file. Um, and also on the repository side, we basically store model. We can change a model namespace. And then we're going to be able to list the models, right? So any models that I have uh, my rights to basically are going to be uh, models that I have created and stored and, 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 um, and deployed or models that also someone from my team has deemed shared, right? So they can also share the models and then uh, those models can be posted there. And then well, on the deployment side, right, we have create model endpoint and score model, and then you can get endpoints or get details and open API specification for a specific endpoint and usually for a model you want to see what the model is expecting right from you and finally the cognitive text components that um, i briefly described so how does this work right so basically for every autonomous database center today right for all of the autonomous database on every oracle oci data center um, you have a specific uri right you have a a specific URL for your data center. So for example, in this case, um, for anything to do with OML services, you're gonna need your OML server slash the OML mod slash V1 is actually the Oracle Machine Learning Services. And that OML server, uh, the definition is depending on where your database is running, right? So if your autonomous is running on Ashburn, for example, then uh, the URL for it, it's just like what you see below. So it's going to be HTTPS, adb.us dash Ashburn dash one. And if you're running in San Jose, if you're running in Phoenix, if you're running in Frankfurt, it's going to change that HTTPS, right? Now, the tenant that we're going to need is the tenancy from um, your uh, account, right? So your OCI account has a unique tenancy. Um, so that's the tenancy we're going to need. And then the PDB, right? So the PDB is the um, autonomous database PDB. Now the tenancy is not the database uh, tenancy, but is the user's account tenancy, right? So, and then the last thing is again, the PDB. Right? So the, that's the name of your um, autonomous, right? So let's take a look at an example and then I'll go into um, a live demo. Um, so basically example, right? The first thing you need to do to use OML services from uh, your autonomous is to request a token. So um, that token then, to request that token, basically that's, this is the idea. So the first thing here is you're gonna request a token with that token, then you can access all the other services, right? For requesting that token, you need a, an autonomous database user and an autonomous database password for that specific PDB, okay? Now, the user has to be granted Oracle Machine Learning Developer, right, by your Oracle Machine Learning Administrator. And I say that because uh, sometimes you create a user uh, in autonomous that not necessarily has the grants for Oracle Machine Learning, right? You might have the grants for queries and, and, and just running and connecting on, against the autonomous database, but the Oracle Machine Learning developer grants need to be given to you by your administrator, right? Or if you actually go to the Oracle Machine Learning administrator front end, um, and then as an administrator, you create a new user, that user already has the grants, right? Immediately it, it, it is created with the grants. Uh, and then to talk to these and to get that, basically you will use something like curl, right? So um, curl is just a, a, a basic and, and much used um, interface for REST APIs, but you can use any 
known REST APIs uh, interfaces that you might be comfortable with or you, you like to use. So this is the example of that curl command that will get you back your token. And um, normally I like to use a Postman myself as as testing environment. So I'm here showing you on the right hand side a demo of that in Postman, right? So you're saying. I have my server, my tenant, my database, I'm sending my user and password, and I get back that very long token. So that's my access token now. From now on, that's the token I need to pass now to the OML services um, endpoints, right? Uh, you see that this the, the token request is going to a, a little bit of a different URL as well, right? So it goes into something called OML users tenants, you see on the top, right? It's not the OML mod. So you get the token from there, and now I am able to do other things. So for example, get a metadata description. So now I can start going to the OML mod, right? Endpoints. And then as an example, if I don't do anything, if I only ask for that and send my token, um, then I'm gonna get back the entire metadata description, right? For example. So this is what we're we're talking about. So if you're connecting there, you send you you do a get against OML mod v1. You pass that token, that very long token that we got, and then we receive all the entire um, basically description, right? So all of these different endpoints, right? The these different models, the cognitive text, the help API deployment. So those are the different components that we were talking about before, right? And then something that is very useful and people ask a lot as well will be the open api uh, description right so that's something that you want to get you want to do a get on that so when you do a get on oml on that url slash api then you're going to get the entire description of that api and 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 that's going to be uh, long because it's going to have all of the components right and every every single piece, right? So that's also known as the Swagger file, right? So very well known in the REST um, API um, world. So I think that's enough on that side, um, on the demo side, like, uh, like in the slide. So what I'm going to do now, and then I'm going to switch to um, uh, my um, Postman. And um, so in Postman, basically the idea here is that um, I can basically um, do the exactly the same things that we were doing. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get a user token. And um, if I you know, go to my mouse here and I move my mouse around, you can see the initial values, right? So that's my database, the OML LA, um, and then I'm actually accessing uh, my San Jose data center, right? And then in the body, as we did before, I'm just sending my username and my password, right? So. I will do a send and I'm contacting my, my data center and then, then I get back my uh, access token. The good thing with uh, something like a Postman is because in the tests here, you get back um, the result and then I can take that token and save it into a, an, a, an environment variable, right? So then I can, now I can, it's easy for me to use it on the next thing. So <clears throat> we saw the APIs and the uh, open API specification. So let me show you around here and the things that you can do um, regarding models, right? So I will ask now for a list of models. So you can see on the top here, I have models. And then with this guy, I request a list of models. So um, as an authorization, I'm sending my token, right? As you guys saw. And um, right here, then it says, okay, this is a version 1.5 of a model called OML Insurance Affinity. And this is the, the model where the model is stored so that I have a model uh, ID here. And that's the namespace, whether the model is shared or not, right? So then that means even if I was not the OML user in this PDB, I was gonna be able to see that model listed here. Then I have a non-X model, right? And this is basically the, the format for the default format, right? Coming back from um, your, uh, your REST. So that's gonna be a JSON format. And basically what I can do here, uh, again, I, I wrote a, a, a few of these uh, templates here that will allow me to take that result 
and visualize it a little better. So if I click here and visualize, uh, it changes and shows me that uh, that output in a better, nicer looking way. So now I see model version, model type, what's the person that created that model, and a model ID, that's a unique name that we get, the model name, and then the namespace and whether it's shared or not, when was it stored, and then a couple of links, right? Links directly to that model specifically. So that's the, the, the H reference for that model, right? Now, um, I can then filter this list. So you see that I have Onyx models and I have Onyx image models here as well, right? So normally they, they have different namespaces or the users might decide to give them different namespaces. So I can do a, a little filter. So say I wanted only the namespace equals OML models, then I then get the same list, right? And I can visualize it. The same list now only have OML models, right? I no longer have the Onyx models here. And I can see all the users that have been storing things in that place, right? Now, if I have a new model to store, right? So in this case, I have um, my uh, serialized formatted model, right? Um, we, you can create um, a serialized model uh, out of an Oracle machine learning model in database model. So we have uh, an example of that in our um, GitHub. We have a notebook with that example where uh, you can basically see how, how that is done. And it's definitely easy to do. So you, ha you have some scripts that you have to follow, but basically the idea is that um, at some point, right? Uh, uh, when, when you finish that script, you will get something like this, right? You will get an OML model uh, file itself, right? And when you have it, right, you're gonna, you wanna give it a model name. So right now it's an OML insurance affinity because I have already that in there. I can say OML insurance two or something like that. And then I, I'm gonna pass that model type, right? The, the version, I can say that's my 1.0 version of that model, whether it's shared a namespace for it. And then I'll select the file itself, right? So then I can say, uh, oh yeah, that's my uh, model there. Okay, open. So and this is the model file now. And then when I, uh, when I can send that, right? Then it registers that model, right? Uh, with OML services. Uh, remember, I'm, I'm always passing the token, right? So the token is the one that authorizes me to do these things. The token lasts for 60 uh, minutes. Um, so the, in this case, you see I got back a model ID. And that model ID is a unique ID, right? Based on that model that I just uh, pushed, okay? Uh, again, just, just to help us out in the tests, I'm pulling that model ID and, and pushing it to an environmental variable. Uh, as well, but um, so then what I can do then with that model, I can get model details. Now, re remember that I have not yet um, created a scoring endpoint with it, right? I'm just stored the model physically there. So now that I have my model ID, that, that this is the one that I just sent, right? I can get the model details. So now I see that model details are basically these kinds of things here, right? What is a version model type? Who created that model? The model ID itself, right? And then the model name, and then my my H references, right? So I, I can visualize a little better like this. And then I can get the model metadata, right? The model is stored again. I gave the model name here in the slash metadata. I can get the model metadata, and the model metadata is going to tell me what the model is doing. So the mining function here is classification. This is an algorithm that was used to create that model, naive base. These are the attributes of that model. Right, so I have age, bookkeeping application, customer gender, marital status, education, home theater, household size, occupation, and all that. And this is the output of that model, affinity card. And these are the labels that I'm going to get out of that zero or one. Okay, so what's telling me is this is a classification model. The input needs to have all of those, all of these variables. Now remember again that. Um, if I don't have one of these columns, right, coming in, in the data, it doesn't matter, right? Oracle Machine Learning is smart enough to know that if you forgot to add age, then it considers 
the 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 age and replaces that missing value and still gives you a probability okay so uh great so i have uh the model here right the attributes i know this is a classification model these are the output attributes a categorical uh, affinity card and then this is the input right so um i can actually get the model content now of course this is the raw model right so if you if you request that you're going to get back this right this is basically the raw file right the, the dot mod file again which actually helps you when you're exporting on you want to take a model from one data center and put it in a different one this might be an easy way to do that right you know that your model is working well you can actually bring back that oml mod in a raw format and then put it back okay so the next thing we're going to do then is create that that model endpoint right so the scoring endpoint because so far we only stored the model there we no, have not necessarily created an endpoint for using it for scoring so right now again a token right as authorization and in the body of that i'm going to pass the model id right that's the model id that was in memory but now the model uri because i already have that uri uh, used before i'm going to say uh oml affinity two right and then um we send that and then we get back as a result our uri again saying okay yes that's a status right? it was created so you got now your actual uri here so for anyone connecting to san jose oml mod v1 deployment oml affinity two and anyone with a proper token right which is only the people that you have on your pdb will be able to access this um, model here right um and then um the idea now is then i can get again model deployment details so remember that before i was using models here right so now i'm using deployment and then uh the uri is the one that i actually just uh created right oml of Affinity two, right? And then I can check that. So I can see that here, here are the details, right? Again, classification, naive base, right? All of that information that we had before, right? Similar to what we had before. Now with a little more information like links and things like that, right? So I can do a visualization out of it. Again, same thing, right? Attributes, input attributes, right? So um you can get the model uh rest api as well right that that, that detail so ml affinity 2 and then you get the open api for that model right specifically this this time right so it tells you the servers the security the deployments and all the endpoints right that you'll see score what are the types of scores um resource not found or any problems connecting and then you get that information as well the schema information on the input types right so it's an array this is an integer this is a double um and then the um all of that basic data right about that model and then the output the output is going to be here right a probability right your label and a probability right so Let's take a look first at all the model deployments. So it's easy to check when you say just deployment and no model in front, you're just saying, give me a list of all the model deployments. So uh, again, I'll visualize it better like this. So now these are the models that were deployed, right? So I can scroll down here and these are the models that are actually deployed and are capable of scoring. And here is our model there, right? The um, our OML insurance too, right? That's the guy that we just created. Remember the OML affinity too, right? And then um, we can we can isolate the um, um, OML models as well, right? So the same thing we can do here, right? With a namespace OML model. So we can check only the deployments now for OML models, right? So we have a smaller, a, big, a little bit of a smaller list here, but we are still there, right? On all affinity too. Right? So let's uh, try scoring, right? So, so we're scoring the models, 
basically, again, always, as always, sending the token, right? Um, and in my body here, I have this. So exactly this is the input records for the OML model. So I'm sending the information like this, right? And this is a one record right, that I'm going to send. So I'm sending one record and I'm going to get, you know, the age, the, the bookkeeping application, gender, marital status, education, and things like that, right? And then um, when I do that, right, uh, we'll see what, what the result is. So you can see here, it returned in 93 milliseconds, okay? So definitely these kinds, um, uh, th this um, architecture, right, with OML services is going to help you with any, you know, sub-second, near real-time um, results, right? Uh, and it's going to be faster than the traditional, say, ORDS um, capabilities or even maybe your your, J, uh, your JDBC kind of connections, right? Uh, and this is this was built for that, okay? So for OML services, it's going to give you, it's going to be capable of, of, of really scoring the OML models very fast. Um, it keeps the models in, in memory, in cache. So, it, you know, whenever you're using them, you're going to see that kind of fast uh, results. So this one came back and basically... I'm only sending the, the, that rec, the set of records and I'm getting scoring results, classification, label zero, probability 0.9, label one, probability 0.07, right? And then, you know, you can visualize that as well in this way, it's probably easier. Um, so that's the, the, the scoring component. Now, remember that for, of course, for um, in terms of, of curl, right? Uh, the um, postman here allows you to actually just click here and check for the exact code that you're sending out, right, with your token. Uh, and then, you know, you can get the results from that input records here, right? So uh, that kind of uh, a component here would probably be the same thing if I uh, copy it over and try to run it inside something like this, right, the terminal. So let me... Let me just uh, run it as an example, and there you go. So you get back in curl, right? In whatever in, you know uh, environment you are, and I'm, I'm here on, on a terminal window, you're gonna get back uh, basically those classifications, right? Probability and label and things like that. So again, it's it's that kind of uh, easy uh, of place that you can do, and of course you have you know everything, right? It's all JavaScripts and and PHP and Python requests. So you can have, you know, all these different types of, of things. Uh, and then it will tell you how to code that and how to execute that right inside whatever environment you are. So it is a very useful environment, uh, Postman, one of the, the useful environments to, to have. Now, once we have that, uh, we can get a little more creative, like how about two records, right? So in, when you are sending two records, this is a way to do it. So you need an input record, and then I open bracket, close bracket, and then I have a comma now, and then I have an, another open bracket here, and the second record, right? And that second record is a little bit different, right? That guy has 39 years old instead of 41. Uh, and then this is, this is married, right? This is a female, so that, that kind of thing. So, um, and then um, again, same thing, right? Just send them and you're going to get back them in the order you, you push them, right? So the first one was the, the same one again, right? The 0.9 and 0.07. The second person here, the lady is the opposite, right? She has a 0.1 for the zero label and a 0.8 for the one label. So that means she has 80% probability of actually accepting that offer, right? And, and I, again, I coded this visualization just to help out with customer zero, customer one, right? In that, in that way. So um, now we do support uh, what we call mini batches. So for example, if you go 10 classifications right here, again, that's, you know, you can scroll down here. I have, uh, or three, I guess. I don't know why I wrote 10, but these are three classifications. And then, um, you see cursor zero, cursor one, cursor two. Oh yeah, so these are 10 actually, yeah. So I have all these guys right? up to customer nine, right? 
And then uh, you can go to 100 classifications. So I'm sending here um, 100 customers, right? Uh, so you can see a scroll. I can scroll all the way down. So I'm sending in, you know, 1,000 and 100 lines here of code to that. So it takes me a little more time to get the data there, but I'm still on 250 milliseconds, right? So it is basically really the time it takes to get there because the time that um, it takes from OML services to send the data back, it is really, really fast, right? And I have 100 classifications done here, right? With a probability and all the way to customer number 99. And then, uh, you know, I, I stretched it up to 250. Um, so that's a little more time, right? but I get a lot of text back, right? And I get all the way down to uh, 250 customers, right? So uh, basically those are the, the mini batches that we call. Um, it's not, the, the, the service is not really built for scoring um, a very large amounts of data, right? That we expect you would probably run something in batch, right? So a batch process that runs every night or a scheduled process that runs every hour, all those kinds of, of processes would, would be what, what I would expect in terms of um, running um, right in batch, right? So um, one other feature we have in um, Oracle Machine Learning is that you can actually ask the top N prediction details, right? So if you look at this, you have a top N details, so the, the only difference between this call and the previous call uh, that I did for single classification is that I'm saying, you know what? I not only want the probability, right? Of this guy buying that card, but I also would like to know why. So send me back the details on why is that we decided that that person would buy or would not buy, right? That card. So when I say top end, uh, details as five. Now I not only get the scoring results, the classification. So it's saying this person is not going to buy, right? With 92% zero, but also I get the details themselves and the details have weights. And it tells me, you know what? These are the weights on, on why we decided that person is not going to buy. So their years of residence was the thing that actually weighted the most here on that decision. Then you have the white box games, the customer metal status, home theater package, and their age as the top five elements, right? Uh, on the, the prediction details. And again, I, I, you can visualize them a little better like that. And then you can see them down here, right? Prediction details. So, um, and if you send two customers, it's the same thing is going to happen. Right? You have the same kind of uh, ability. They stop and details on the top, and then you add, you know, one and, and another customer down, and you're going to get both uh, results. So you get both the probabilities plus the details, and then the next customer probabilities and the next customer details, right? So you get for customer zero here for the first customer probability and details, and then for the next customer. I got probability and I got details, okay? So finally, the two last components here on the um, OML models is basically remove OML scoring endpoint. So that's you delete the deployment. So remember that you, you have to delete the deployment first and then you can delete the model itself, okay? But you can keep the model still in OML services but not necessarily deployed. And that's useful because you might have 10 different models, right? And then you might be testing two at a time. Uh, in, so you wanna switch them around and then you wanna turn one on and off, but you wanna use the same URI, for example, right? If you're doing some A-B testing. So those things are very useful. You can then register one model with, a, with the same URI that you were registering the, the, all the A models and then all the B models with another URI so your application does not need to change when you're testing those things. But the back, in the background, you have several different models that you're testing and switching around, okay? All right, so having uh, spoken then about uh, OML models, right? You now have the uh, Onyx 
models, right? And with uh, Onyx models, um, we, we talked about a little bit about that before. So in this case, your Onyx model is basically your third-party model. So in this case, I actually have an Onyx model uh, that uh, you can see here. So these are um, Titanic models. So models trying to predict survival, right? In the Titanic uh, incident. And then looking at the, um, in this case, they were built using scikit-learn. So uh, first things first, I can push a model there, right? And in this case, it will be something like this, right? So you get an Onyx zip file, right? And then you get my model type. You got the model name, right? And then I, again, I can change that model name because I, I have another one already registered, right? So I can do scikit uh, Titanic Sue or something like that, right? And then um, I can do that. And then, you know, I just send and then it's going to, oops, the model data I need to bring over the data. So then I bring the, the file, the zip file, open that file, and then I send it. And then you get back the model ID. Same thing as before, the model ID, we are just making sure that it's stored in the Onyx ML model ID um, in, the, in a variable. And then um, once that model is there, you can get, again, model details, right? Because we changed the, the model ID. So once I can get the model ID then from Onyx, and then I get that uh, information back from that model. I can the model metadata as well. So in this case, the model metadata is going to tell you uh, based on these are the variables, right? Defined by the model. So passenger class, the sex, right? The age, the fare, the embarked. And then the output labels are going to be something like this. I have an output label and output probability. And the labels are zero or one, right? So I can get, again, the, the same zip file back as a raw model, right? As I mentioned that before. So when you get to the raw model, you can bring it back to your uh, laptop or computer and then, um, then store it in a different uh, data center, for example, if you need it. Um, then we want to create the model uh, scoring endpoint, right? And for that, remember that I have uh, the model uh, ID, right? But now the URI, um, I probably want to change that because I don't want to replace URIs that I already have. So I can do something like that. And then I get now the URI and this model now is alive and kicking, right? So the model is now deployed and online, available for scoring, right? So the same thing we did before as getting the model deployment details, right? And checking all the deployments that are available. We're just going to check the deployments available here. And then we can see that the deployments available, I have the Onyx here, Titanic model, and I scroll down and I'll see my uh, Titanic 2, right? So that's, that's available there. So let's score, right? So I can score with that and then I can either, you know, I can just switch that and score that to, to that Titanic model that I just created. Now, again, always token, but also in the body, it's a little bit different. So the way to send the records, right, compared to what I was doing before, it's just a, 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 a bit different, but it's the same process, right? So this is the standard way for Onyx to receive input, right? So then I'm going to send the input records like this, right? So this is the data, that's the text, age, fare, and embarked, right? So these are the values that I'm going to send. And um, again, that's it, right? So I send that value and I get back the results, right? And this was not as fast as the OML uh, in database, but it was plenty fast, right? 150 milliseconds for that scoring to happen. And then you got the classifications, label zero probability, 60%, label one probability, 35%, right? So whether that person survives, and I, in this case, what it's saying is that person probably did not survive, right? The third, third class passenger. Um, and then, um, so that's on the this guy. And then you can request for mini batches and multiple records, right? So the same thing again, is just a, a bit different. You send the, the two, um, uh, the two different uh, records like this, right? So for every variable or for every um, column name there, 
you add those two different uh, components there, right? So we can do that and then you can send the request and now you can see the probability for the first passenger and probability for the second passenger, which had a, a high probability of survival because it's also a female, right? So that might have uh, helped a lot in here. And of course, as a, as a little girl, right? Five years old. So, um, so that's basically the, the, the idea with uh, Onyx classical models. Uh, again, you also can delete the, the, um, the endpoints and the, and the um, models themselves, right? In that order. Uh, looking at image classification now, right? So if we look at the image models that are already there, um, then uh, we can have an, uh, take an idea here, right? So we have some efficient net uh, light. We have some squeeze net models there registered, right? That we are using. And um, instead of taking you to the same process, because this is going to be the same thing again, right? You're going to store the model. You're going to, you know, uh, you're going to store the model. You're going to give it a name. You're going to give it a version. You're going to get a list of models and then a list of endpoints. So it's going to be the same thing again, right? Uh, I'm going to just sh show you the, the current endpoints, right, that you have. So these are only two right now uh, models that are endpoints that are available for uh, Onyx image. So let's score uh, a model, right? So to score an image uh, model, basically what you need is an image, right? So in this case, I'm going to use... Uh, an image from uh, that is a tiger shark image. We can pick it up from here, so I can do that, and then you can see that it's a. Uh... So you can see that this this shark, right? So that's that's the image that I'm gonna ship, right? I'm gonna send, and and yeah, it, it looks clearly like a a good tiger shark with its little things in the fins, right? So I'm I'm gonna open that file, and I'm gonna ship that file. So that's that's the body. There's a form data, and that's it. Image data, that's the body that I have. Always authorization token, right? So in the body, then I ship that. And what this model now does is that it comes back to me with all the different probability in classifications out of a 999 different types um, of objects, right? So it takes a little more time, right? It's still sub-second. It takes a little more time because the transfer, right, of that image file, um, it takes it will take some time to get to the data center that it needs, right? But you can see that the return is 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 very fast, and then you're going to get all these classifications. So I have: is it a tinka tinka or is it a goldfish? No. It is a great white shark. No, right? You see the probabilities down here. But then you get to the tiger shark. And that's the probability, right, of that image being a tiger shark, which is great, right? Because then it can recognize it's not an electric ray, it's not a stingray. And if you scroll all the way down, you got all sorts of things here, right, defined uh, flamingos and whatever. So uh, you can visualize them better like this. So you can see the easier that, you know, the tiger shark is the one with the highest probability here, right? And, and, and even the great white shark, oh, got a, Got a you know a, a, a five uh, zero 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 one probability, but yeah, that was not it. So, uh, which is great. And then the the other image, for example, uh, the second example I have here is a a goldfish, right? So if I do goldfish right here, right? So you guys can see that it's it's a goldfish. So I can do open, and I can send a request for uh, for that, right? So that guy then came back. And um, yeah, the same thing is going to happen, right? So now I have a goldfish with a 0.9999 probability, right? And thank God it's not a tiger shark, right? It's not a tiger shark. So uh, that's the idea with the image classification. Um, and then finally, I'll switch to um, the uh, cognitive text portion. So on the cognitive text, as I mentioned before, we have several different features, different things that we can do, right? So we have a cognitive text uh, endpoints for topics, for keywords, right? For similarity, we have for features, right? And then we will uh, give it a try. So in this case, I don't need to have any model. I don't need to register anything. This is a, a built-in feature of OML services, right? I'm using 
uh, a Wikipedia model that we process and we uh, create and, and we uh, curate so that it's going to give you uh, basic uh, information and ideas on, for example, in this case, keywords. I'm using my token again. So that's all I need. I need my token. And in the body, I'm going to pass the text that I want to be that uh, the machine learning OML services analyze. And I'm saying, give me the top five. So when I say keywords here, right, I'm asking for the top five keywords. So I send that and then I immediately get back my results. So I get the text back. And it's going to say, okay, these are the keywords, right? I found Oracle, algorithms, database, scalability, and machine, right? And these are the, the weights of those keywords, right? That you found on this text. Um, same thing is going to happen with summary. So I'm going to ask for summary, top five summary of that text. So then it goes and gets me the phrases that would represent a summary of that text. Right? So it takes back the sentences and it tells me, okay, these are the scores for the, the most, likely, um, uh, most likely sentence to give a good overview of what the text is talking about. Right? Uh, again, sentiment, um, sentiment is all, right now is only available in English. So if you do sentiment here, you're going to get back you know, a pretty neutral sentiment, right? In this case. That's basically the, the, the level of confidence we have. And then uh, topics, you again, top five topics, I will get back my uh, topics, right? On that text. So Oracle database, scalability, Oracle corporation, machine learning, analysis of algorithms, right? And finally, similarity here. So similarity uh, is gonna say, okay, how similar is, the first text to the second text, right? So as a probe, I can, yes, I can add the, an entire text as well, um, right? But basically is, is using similarity and distances of the features, right? So it's doing the feature extraction from the texts and then comparing that distance, right? So when I do that, then it'll gonna get me the similarity, right? 0.57 here um, on that, right? So the probe of machine learning algorithms, right? Versus that. Uh, I can have the features as well. So this is the case where you want to get your own text. You want to get the features in the Wikipedia. We give you back around 2000 plus features uh, based on our um, Wikipedia model, right? So you get the text and then you are going to get all the weights back. So what you do then is with these weights is basically you can use these weights now, which you can see it's you know a little over two thousand weights that you're gonna get back from our specific dictionary, right, and our specific uh, text uh, policies and all that. And then so once you have that, you can then get change the text here, and now you're gonna get your weights for the other text, and those are comparable, right? The idea is those are comparable by distances. Um, Keywords, again, in Spanish. So the only change here is you add language. So you put language, Spanish. You give me a text in Spanish, and I'm going to get you the results. So you're going to get the keywords uh, in Spanish, right? Escalabilidad, implementación, algoritmos, datos, and things like that, right? Same thing is going to work for everything else but uh, sentiment. And the French, same thing again, right? You say language is French. And now I'm going to send that text, right? So when you send that text and you want the five top keywords, you get the Doné, machine, algorithms, um, Oracle, and base, right? So that's, um, that's the idea from, uh, from the standpoint of OML services. So I have a lot of different features that you guys saw. Uh, and then there's one more interesting and important thing. Uh, to talk about, which is actually the fact that we are now adding um, uh, the, the ability or capabilities, right, are actually going to be added and actually are integral part of um, AutoML UI. So AutoML UI is also on limited availability right now. Uh, again, you guys can contact us for that. And what it does then is, is actually capable of deploying the models 
from AutoML UI, you can deploy the model to OML services, right? So uh, in interest of time, I'm, I'm going to just show you guys a real quick demo here on the video instead of opening uh, opening that up. But basically, in AutoML, you have experiments, right? And when you click on an experiment and you run the experiment, you get a leaderboard of models, right? What's the best model? So in this case, I'm going to select that random forest model and I'm going to deploy that model. So that deployment is going to happen automatically behind the scenes. So you're typing in your model name, the URI you would like to use, what's the version of that model, the namespace, just what we had, and you click a button. That's going to both register the model and deploy it. That's going to do the, the two things, right? The other way to deploy a model from AutoML UI is actually from our models menu. That's new as well. So when you are going to click on the models, you're going to see the models there, and you're going to select the model that you built, and then you're going to click deploy. Again, that same menu opens up. You're going to, again, add the same things, right? So I guess that's much easier than typing and, and putting curl and rest uh, and stuff like that. But the idea is that behind the scenes, you're using the same capabilities. When you deploy the model now, you can come here and look at the deployments. So you'll be able to click on deployments and see all of the deployments that were done, right? So affinity card and insurance models and all those things, you're going to be able to see them from that menu, right? The same way. So um, for more information on OML services, uh, we have even the documentation out today. Uh, that's in pre-general availability draft format, um, but it's available. So anyone can connect and, and, and see them. They're just hidden. So unless you type the entire link, you don't see them. But once you type all that link, you can um, get access to the documentation. And um, also, as always, on our GitHub. So the cool thing in the GitHub is you not only have the example notebooks uh, and, and labs and things like that, but there is a new OML services that um, I created a few days ago. And in there, you're going to find the all of the demos that you guys saw today in Postman collections. So if you have Postman available, you can just download those collections and just start using. Exact, you don't need, need to type all of those things that I typed. They're going to be uh, just uh, right there available uh, to you, right? Um, so with that, um, I think we're probably about done, Mark, here. Um, how are the questions coming? Uh? Oh, we've had a lot of questions. Uh, many of them are being answered as we speak. Okay. And uh, so thanks, Marcus. That was really a, a great presentation and, and demonstration of the features. Um, you know, it's just from the, the questions that, uh, that we've received, certainly a great deal of interest in how we can access it. How might we scale up um, the access to this? One question we have is uh, if you had a thousand requests for a model or have many models to deploy, um, how would you take advantage of that? Yeah, so if you have a thousand requests for the model, um, uh, it's it's still okay. The idea here is OML services is going to um, uh, scale. We have a load balancer behind the scenes. We're going to help you know scale the model right for you as a service. We only charge you for the CPU usage behind the scenes. So a as a difference from um, uh, say. Uh, other components, right? That you might get charged because you are you have a model deployed, right? In our case, if your model is deployed but no one is using it, you're not getting charged. Uh, and then, if you hit me with a thousand requests, you know, a minute, then we're gonna charge you for the CPU you're using, which actually you saw it's low, right? So it's never gonna be like a, a great thing. But that's a great uh, a great question for scalability, and so. We're doing a lot of tests uh, in terms of scalability. We have done, um, and then uh, if you need more details on that and, and perhaps even your specific use case, we, we would love to, to know more about it. So following up on that, the, a question about, well, what if I have 300 million rows? I'm gathering that you're saying that you want to score uh, 300 million rows. It's not hypothetical. A customer actually wants to do this. Um, but do they want to do it through a REST interface interactively, or is this a batch scoring that they, they want to do? Um, Marcus, any comments on that? 
Yeah, I, th I think that that's that would sound probably uh, more like a batch kind of scoring uh, in my mind. Um, but otherwise, you might have 300 million records coming in, and, and and you know maybe data is dripping right at that point. You get a thousand requests a second or something like that, right? And, and that still might be something that someone wants to do. Um, if you want to do 300 million records at a, at at once, then uh, autonomous database can handle that without without any issues. We have tested it to a billion records, uh, no sweat, but. But of course, that's gonna again depend on on how much uh, that volume of data you can you want to uh, go through, right? Mm -hmm. So um, so we, we, we probably want to check that use case. Um, the the other question was where you can download uh, the components. So if you go to the Oracle database examples, right? Oracle dash db that examples in GitHub, right? Um, then you're gonna see us in the machine learning section here. And then in OML services. So in, inside here, I have the Postman collection examples. And there you go. So you have the not only the collections, you have the environment as well. So I'm giving you a, 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 a free environment to test out as well um, in inside uh, these uh, these database, uh, the, the uh, one of the all of our uh, uh, sample environments, and then some OML models. So if you don't have a a dot mod file right if you don't have your oracle machine learning model available you can use it and register one of these guys this is the one that i use on, on that demo as well okay great oh and we have a comment from uh, uh thomas van Gilt that uh, for large streaming data uh, one can use oracle streaming analytics to integrate with oml services once it's ga so that's that's nice to uh to see as well oh that's right thank you thomas yes and another question, AutoML UI will maintain the version control of the models, question mark. Uh, can we use multiple versions of deployed models for testing? Yes, I think that's a, that's a great question. So in AutoML UI, you are going to see um, uh, that uh, a capability, um, but is, you're gonna see the, the version number, but you're not gonna necessarily be able to uh, Let's say it's not an automatic uh, control, right? No, but but you I can have multiple versions and test them side by side. You you can do that. Right. Thank you, Boriana. Yeah, that's that's correct. So let me go to models here. So in the models, uh, you're going to be able to see you have the models here, right? And then in the deployments, you're going to have you know several versions of that same model that you can keep testing, right? So I have OML Insurance Affinity multiple times here with different versions, they all have a different URI though, right? The URI is unique, but then you can, uh, you know, in, in your application, you can test version two, version three, right? Very easily. And is there any integration between data science cloud service and OML service? Um, the, one of the, the things that I know that um, the OCI data science uh, folks are doing, they are uh, enabling uh, Onyx uh, format models to be exported, and those models, as long as they conform to um, you know classification regression that we're supporting with uh, OML services, uh, those could be stored there as well. So uh, they would have the same access to the OML services as um, uh, as other users. Right, and um, the other question is whether Terraform integration is planned. Um, uh, so, so Terraform would help you build and, and create a, a PDB, right? Create users, Oracle Machine Learning users. We actually use that behind the scenes in uh, live labs, right? When you create uh, users and OML users and things like that. But OML services is a multi-tenant service, right, itself. So you don't need to um, build or prepare anything for it, right? It's it's going to be already there. It's, it's, it's an actual oracle cloud service right so it's running all the time and um, so as long as you have an oracle autonomous database user and password then you can and that that guy is authorized to run oml then you can get a, a token and use it hopefully that makes sense okay 
Well, that brings us to the top of the hour and seems we've addressed all of the questions. So uh, thank you again, Marcos, for this uh, great presentation and demo. And thank you for all of our attendees and uh, your uh, interest in questions and answers. So until next time, uh, have a great rest of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. See you next week.